pretty much every major university in the United States pays these sort of licensing fees to organizations like JSTAR and Thompson and ISI to get access to scholarly journals that the rest of the world can't read. These scholarly journals and articles are essentially the entire wealth of human knowledge online, and many have been paid for with taxpayer money or with government grants. But to read them, you often have to pay again, handing over steep fees to publishers like Reed Elsevier. These licensing fees are so substantial that people who are studying in India instead of studying in the United States don't have this kind of access. They're locked out from all of these journals. They're locked out from our entire scientific legacy. I mean, a lot of these journal articles, they go back to the Enlightenment. Every time someone has written down a scientific paper, it's been scanned and digitized and put in these collections. That is a legacy that has been brought to us by the history of people doing interesting work, the history of scientists. It's a legacy that should belong to us as a commons, as a people, but instead it's been locked up and put online by a handful of for-profit corporations who then try and get the maximum profit they can out of it. So a researcher paid by the university or, or, the, or the people publishes a paper and in the very, very last step of that process, after all the work is done, after all the original research is done, the thinking, the lab work, the analysis, after everything is done at that last stage, then the researcher has to hand over his or her copyright to this multi-billion dollar company. And it's sick. It's an entire economy built on volunteer labor. Uh, and then the publishers sit at the very top and scrape off the cream. Talk about a scam. One publisher in, in Britain made a profit of $3 billion last year. I mean, what a racket. JSTOR is just a very, very small player in that story. But for some reason, JSTOR is the player that Aaron decided to confront.